All right, what's up, everybody? This is going to be a fun video because I have a guest on my channel. I've Hello. got Dev. What's up, it's, man? <laughs> man, same old, same old, dude. Just always happy to get together with you, hang out for a while, talk wrestling for an hour before we hit record and all that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I keep threatening that we're going to have a wrestling podcast channel at some point, but, you know, okay. we'll see. But, yeah, today we want to talk about each of us are going to pick five of our cards that are the most underrated from Thunder Junction because, man, the set's huge. And I think a lot of stuff's just going overlooked. Some stuff is maybe not going for as much as some of the other cards that don't make a lot of sense. So it's like, this is going to be a pretty cool list, I think. And some of our choices might surprise people. Yeah, we got some spicy stuff <laughs> on both of our lists. We went over our list with one another before this for the first time ever. And um, we were both kind of surprised. That's some of the stuff that one another picked. So it's going to be yeah. a fun list. So. <laughs> So you're the guest, so why don't we let you oh. go first for what your number five is on oh. the most underrated. Always a gentleman. Um, my number five is Intrepid Stable Master. This is a two-mana, two-two reach guy in green that you can tap for mana if you want to, but he also taps for two mana of any one color as long as you're casting a mount or a vehicle. There's not a whole lot of great looking vehicles. I'm going to level with you. Um, you. He can cast a turn three Gitrog. Okay, but if you're interested, he can also, since he casts vehicles, he casts a turn three Magmatic Galleon. He casts a turn three Mysterious Limousine. He might be good in some sort of Grease Fang deck in standard. Like, there is definitely stuff you can do with this guy. Like, five mana available on turn three is huge in standard, you know? Yeah, I'm just looking at that, and, like, turn three Gitrog is pretty strong. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just, not bad. just by itself. <laughs> but there's also a possibility of, like, you could use that mana split up, right? So you might cast two different creatures on turn three. Yeah, yeah and you like, cast, like, a doable. three drop and a two drop, and that's that's good, man. You're getting on board pretty nicely with that. He's also, like, he's got sneaky reach, so he blocks, like, Deep Cavern Bat, Spyglass Siren, like, all these, like, dinky little, like, turn one and two flyers that we see in standard. He blocks all of those effectively. So... Did we give I, that reach just because it has artwork with like the big bird style dinosaur or whatever? Yeah, I don't really. The reach <laughs> like kind of makes sense in my head, but I guess maybe he can't fly a lot. You know, like Fair. he can fly like a chicken or something. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't stay up in the air very long, especially it, it, if he's got a guy riding him, you know. Exactly. Well, I guess he's That's not true. a mount, but, um, but yeah, I, I just think like the ability to have three mana or five mana on turn three is just always relevant. And like, you know, slap reach on him. Like, you're doing good. So. This dude, there's not much to say about this guy, but we saw a few good like rampers. A lot of people are talking about what is it, hard bristle bandit, the dude you commit a crime, you mm, untap yeah. it. Um, and he does look great. Don't get me wrong, but I think this dude's kind of sleeping a little bit, you know? Tapping you know, for two minutes. I will say this nuts. if mounts slash vehicles are a real deck or whatever, like this probably is gonna be a key card in there. I mean, you face green be. with other stuff, and I think the trick is just gonna be what else do you play with it? Yeah. You know, I went through Scryfall looking at all the mounts and this really not a whole lot that it impresses me, but like, you never know. Maybe they'll do more mounts in, in subsequent sets, but even if they don't, this is set up to do some cool stuff with vehicles and like a mount or two. There's probably another five men amount. This will do something with, you know, <laughs> but what is, um, what is your number five? If you don't mind me asking that. my number five. And I think this whole like slew of joins up cards are actually pretty decent. But this particular one, Kellen joins up, hmm. is actually pretty sweet. It's a green, white, blue for legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you get to exile a non-land card with mana value three or less from your hand. If you do, it becomes plotted. So you just get a free card next turn, which is awesome. But then every time you play a legendary creature, it pumps up all your other creatures by putting a plus one counter on each creature you control. On each creature or each legendary creature you on control? On each creature you Ooh. control. Okay, that's yeah, that's, that's hard. Yeah, I don't know if I caught that the first time I read the yeah, card. Yeah, like it's huh. real good, right? And there's Ow. already a bunch of different base legend decks that are doing a bunch of things. And Joda and Esper. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you even have some like green white legends, so it's easy to splash blue if you wanted to. You could even play one of the Kellens or two because there is a green blue one you could play in there as well that flies. Yeah, like Kellen, Kellen the kid don't look too bad either. Like three three flying life yeah. for three mana. You know? And, and well, the fun terrible. thing here is, like I said, you, you get to play this and you get a free card next turn. <laughs> like just, just because, like no good reason. 
That's my favorite thing about this card is that like usually a three mana enchantment like this, you just, oh, it's a do nothing enchantment. You know, you have to skip your turn three and you kind of do have to skip your turn three a little bit if you're playing it on curb. But by the same token, it's not like you didn't do anything, you know, like it still pays you a free card eventually. And like getting that free removal spell, you know, you don't want to plot a counter spell with it. Don't make that mistake. But like getting a free removal spell or like a free creature, you know, on the next turn is a really big deal. You can plot a legendary creature with it too, and then get that legend for free. And that pumps the rest of your team when it comes into play on turn four. And like, that's an awesome sequence. So also some fun stuff too. You play this, like you already have all the different lands that exist. Cause now we're also getting all the other fast lands in the set. So yeah. Mana will best, no longer be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> but imagine like, I don't know, you put away like a Anim Pakal because that costs three. Yeah. It comes into play. It automatically gets a counter because it puts a plus and plus one on each creature you control. All of them. Yeah. So, so now other. you're attacking with bonus stuff and all your things are bigger and you yep. got the extra tokens from the Anim Pakal. I really so like, like that. So there's some quirky things you could do with this that are actually pretty sweet. It's like five color legends is like technically already a deck. Yeah. Um. So because Joda, I guess, is a card. It all depends on like how you build that deck, and this could <laughs> definitely go in. What are hmm? Yeah, I was there's just a lot about like uh, Bant humans or something like that. Like oh, Bant yeah. legendary humans. Adeline like, also is three. That's exactly. a bonus for free. Yep, yep, yep. There's <laughs> like, there's a lot of cool like legendary three drops you can plot with this, and then suddenly like if you played a one and two drop, even if you just played a two drop, then like that's going to get bigger on turn four yep. and you have all your mana open too. Like you can play a decent legend. Like you can play Rafine off of this. Oh, sure. And have like shields up on your next turn. Like all your mana on tap. Like, it's so it's kind of gross. This should be a lot of fun. I'm, yeah. I'm going to enjoy playing with this a bit. Yeah. What did the Bant um, Ascendancy do? I completely forgot, but it's something uh, about putting plus one, plus one counters. During on your end step, it puts a plus one, plus one counter and a loyalty counter on each creature oh, and, and or planeswalker. Uh, planeswalker yeah yeah this seems i mean that just works every single turn but this does need a little extra love put into it you got to be playing legends and stuff but like it seems like it has the potential to go off a lot stronger than a card like the bant ascendancy and just put like a bunch of counters on your guys all on the same turn if you can yep. play multiple legends so like you can go from a relatively small team to a bunch of five fives like pretty fast with a card like this. So especially also considering good. again, like you get a free spell and you can play a legend on four. That's two legends in the same turn. What I like about it's it huge. I like it on recovery turns, right? Like maybe turn three or four where you're That's like, okay, point. they might have play a sweeper next turn. Let me just go ahead and play this, put a card away. So if a sweeper does happen, now you play one or two things from your hand plus that. And they all got counters from being played. So yeah. you already built your force right back up to keep attacking. Yeah. That's a I good like point. That a lot too. I, I like the way plot plays against like sweepers in general, mm-hmm. but especially a card like this, because not only do you get back on board, right? But like it pumps whatever dude you have on your team. It just pumps the guy you play um, True. for free, you know? And again, like you said, my opponent hits like, you know, sweeper of some kind and I have any creatures in my hand. It's like, okay, now I get to play the legend for free. I get to play the creature out of my hand. Like I'm right back on board after a sunfall. So, yeah, and my guys are huge because this proc twice. All right. So, yeah. That's enough about this. What's your number Sorry. four? <laughs> Sorry. I just, I, honestly, that card could have been on my list. I like that card too. Um, number four is, is Cactus. I had to roll my eyes on my own entry. Cactus Folk Sure Shot. Now this. Oh, I like that one. In Gruel, yeah, it's a four mana, four, four, uh, two, a red and a green. It has, uh, let me actually take a look at it because it has a lot of stuff. Yeah, reach is the sneaky ability. Like, What's the sneaky ability? It's got reach and ward two. At the beginning of combat on your turn, other creatures you control with power four or greater gain trample and haste until EOT. So it doesn't ever give itself trample and haste, but all your other boys getting trample, all your other big boys getting trample and haste for the rest of the game. Like your opponent has to put about as much mana into killing this as you used cast it. They want to go for the throat at cost four. Um, and in the meantime, if you actually do untap with it in play, which like it facilitates, you know, it's got the ward, then, um, any huge guy you play has trample and any huge dude you play has trample and haze. Um, you rip this off the top of your library on turn six or seven or something. Like it's good for the rest of the game. Like giving all, even just giving all your huge guys trample the turn it comes down could be relevant enough. So yeah, I like it. (laughs) 
You know, I again, I think you're right. It's harder to kill because of Ward 2, which we've seen. Once you go 2 or higher on Ward, or Ward plus another cost, whether it's like sack a creature, discard card, whatever, that's always good. It so gets I annoying quick. I think this is fine. I think it's 4-4 four, four for 4 with 2 real abilities, which is super nice. And like you're saying, like you can hell, you could just play with any other creatures that are big, and now they trample. Yeah, enormous. Right? That's relevant in a world of all the Boros tokens and mono red and whatever. So yeah, like, I'm down yep. with that. Yeah, trample is such a good ability at the moment, um, because of all those little tokeny guys and like Voldar and Epicures and Novice Inspectors and like who cares, you know, Gleeful Demolition tokens. It's just like <laughs> there's a bunch of dinky little boys out there, and like you can just run through all of them, even if you only have like two big ish guys out. Then suddenly, you know, a 6-6 six, six trample and a 5-5 five, five trample do a lot of work against a small team. So just that. But like, you know, imagine you untap with this and play and play Titan of Industry, which I guess already has trample. But giving any big guy haste is massive. Um, we were talking about how this interacts with fight rigging before we got on. And that's kind of interesting because they both trigger at the beginning of combat, this and fight rigging. But if you order the triggers correctly, and this guy's already on the table, order the triggers correctly, fight rigging can put a huge monster on your side of the table for free, and then this trigger goes off and gives him haste. So, like, that's a fun interaction. It's just not much to say about it. It's just kind of a big, dumb gruel card, but, like, at the very least in Commander, the sort of, like, global, almost anthem effect of giving all your guys these two super relevant abilities is that's good, but in Standard, it could be good, too. Oh, yeah. If you're playing any of those decks that care about just large creatures ramping things out, like this is exactly what you want. So like, imagine you Andrag. Yeah. And you don't have to sit and wait. It's just like, cool. It's coming in, getting work done. <laughs> All right. Immediately. <laughs> Guaranteed. But yeah, what I'm into is. It, man. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I just, I don't think enough people, people are like, oh, it's a cactus guy. That's nice. But like, people don't actually I mean, care about let's the also text bring box. The fact that like <laughs> plant might actually be a thing. Yeah. Like, you know, roots, like, I guess Insidious Roots cares about plants, but. That could be fun because, like, how many times have you seen Insidious Roots tokens get to like four, five, six power, but they can't get through? And like, exactly. this guy help. So, <laughs> but what is your number four? My number four. This is an interesting one because I don't think it's like crazy underrated, but like just enough because of its cost, <laughs> I think. But it's Gissa the Hellraiser. I really like this card. You've got a five mana, four, four human warlock with ward two and pay two life. So it's a strong ward cost, right? Super it's two plus yeah. life. I like that a lot because again, you're investing a lot of mana in a thing that really pumps the rest of your team. So you've got skeletons and zombies get plus one, plus one and menace. So it's like, not only do you get to pump two different creature types that needed some help right now in standard, especially yeah. since really some of them are going to get their last hurrah, I guess. In this current rotation. Soon, yeah. True. So it's like, give them a chance. We actually needed something for skeletons. This pumps those. They all get menace, which is super good. And then on top of it, when you commit a crime, you make two tokens that are blue and black, two, two zombie rogues. So like, you only get to do it once each turn, but you can do it on your but, turn and then on their turn. Yep. The cool part about it too, though, is not only are there zombies, they're randomly zombie rogues. And there yeah. are a lot of things in the set that care about being a rogue or a warlock. Or an which outlaw. Hellraiser yeah. also is. So it's so like, yeah, there's a lot going on with this card for five mana. Like, yeah, like even if you are trying to do something janky with like Rakish Crew, the Bastion of Remembrance for Outlaws, like this gives you a bunch of outlaws. Committing a crime is super easy. Oh, yeah. Um, the turn you play, Gisa, you can get in with um a graveyard trespasser and you get to you get four power. Like you just mm -hmm. put eight power on the table for five mana. And like we were talking about this with Sure Shot too. Ward, we didn't really bring this up, but just Ward is such an underrated ability. And two life, first of all, two life is not nothing. Um, and Ward two is not nothing. If they want to, like, if they want to throat goat this, they have to pay four mana. It's not as much as you put into it, but that's almost one for one. You don't feel so bad about paying five mana for this if they have to pay four mana to remove it. That's their whole turn most of the time. So, and if this ever triggers, if this ever triggers, it leaves just as much power on the battlefield as you put on there in the first place. You know, like if they, if they kill your Gisa, that's cool. I committed a crime and got, and you can even commit a crime at instant speed. Like if they do target your Gisa, you can then commit a crime at instant speed and get your four power worth of Zombas or six power really, because it's actually putting three threes on the table. Yeah, exactly. Um, cause it's an Anthem effect. 
I also think long term, this is going to be a card that always keeps value because all of those things that like pump zombies and whatever historically yep. still Love have value commander. in commander and they're always worth something. Yeah, so, it is surprisingly like rare to find a good zombie anthem that isn't like 10 bucks. Yeah, that's what I'm so, saying. They always hold yeah. value. So you could pick up this card and know that it's probably going to be safe for a while. Yeah. And I love Skellies, man. Like, I was really happy to see Skeleton support. We not only already had, um, what is it, Corpses of the Lost in Standard. Yeah. Now, I don't know how much play that sees with this, but we did just get, and I've forgotten his name, but we got like a one black man, oh, Tiny two, Bones. Two skeleton. Not, yes, we got Tiny Bones too, the legend, Yeah, who is awesome. But we also got a one mana skeleton in black that's a two two, and he he comes back over and over. If you oh, commit yeah, a crime, yeah. you pay a black mana and you bring him back. So he's really good for loops because you can do it more than once a turn. Um, yeah, there's, as long there's a as you few skeletons, a but there just hasn't been enough to support it. But this card yeah. for sure pushes that up. And now we have multiple one drop skeletons. Yeah, we have Tiny Bones and the guy I'm talking about. So like skeletons might be real, but the the thing I'm really like feeling this card with is just like mono black mid range. I know everyone plays Aklazots as their five drop in mid range, and he's sure. very good. I've had a lot of great times, but you get four, you get six power when you commit a crime with this thing, and they must kill. This is a must kill card as soon as it hits the table, and to kill it, they have to devote resources. Whoa. And you've got Shieldred on the table; they're taking damage to that. How many times can they actually afford? I would to say pay the ward. Even you know? beyond that, it's just it comes down and gives everything menace. Yeah, like that alone could be enough to win the game. Well, plus one, plus one in menace, really. In menace, yeah. yeah. Menace is a crazy ability that doesn't get enough flowers in and of itself. You know, like this can come down on five and win the game. That oh turn. sure. So all right, yeah. What's your number four? Oh, we can't talk about Giso no more. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's my number three. Um, oh, number three. Yeah, true. You're ahead of me here. And my number three is gisa it's not it's <laughs> it's dance of the tumbleweeds uh, a card no one's ever heard of this is a uh, two mana at base for a sorcery with spree in green for an extra mana you search your library for a basic or a desert card put it on the battlefield shuffle up and for an extra three mana you can also create an xx elemental x is equal to the number of lands you control so a uh, super sneaky thing about this card is that it doesn't put the land into play tapped Mm. And that is really easy to miss when you first read the card. Uh, but yeah, just get you a free basic that's untapped, which is good. Um, also, late in the game, your just ramp thing can convert into like an 8-8. True. Well, come on. You can do both, too. You know, it only costs like, what is it, five mana or something like that? Um, six mana to do both of the things. And like that could be good in the late game. Imagine playing this for six mana. And getting your seventh land, which gives you a seven seven, and your topiary stomper comes online the same turn. Okay, um, you can get this back with Shigeki because it's not legendary, so you can ramp with it early, channel it back with Shigeki, and then make your like ten ten. So right. you know, I just think that's like three or four things, but like mostly the land not coming into play tapped is. I think what I like about it most is there's a lot of decks that do kind of just the rampy thing to set up stuff later. And you're, and a lot of times you're stuck playing like this three mana search for a land, maybe make a token, you know, whatever. So like, it's cool to have this as an option that early on you're like, okay, I'll just go get a land with it. But if I draw it late, it's like, okay, cool. Now there is another land and a big six, six, seven, seven or large. Yep. Right. And it goes and gets particularly either a basic or a desert. And we've seen deserts that do all kinds of things, right? So if yeah, the desert deck is real, this could be a thing. Yeah, there's some very real deserts. We've just seen those deserts that um you know, shot that they ping your opponent when they come into play. So this could be like a free one damage at the very least. There's that desert that produces two mana when you tap it and yeah. bounces the land when it comes into play. And you can just tap the land that you plan to bounce to help you play this spell in the first place and then put the land into play that gives you two mana. I don't know. It, there's 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 fun stuff you can do with this. I'm almost sure. We also saw something that's kind of like a um invasion is into car explosive vegetation. It goes and gets two deserts. Oh I yeah. I just kind of want to yeah. shout that card out real quick because that card can like shock your opponent if it puts two deserts in play, like desert duels. So there's there's some interesting desert ramp, but this is my favorite of the whole suite because like you know, later in the game, not even that late. You know, yeah. like on turn four, <laughs> it can be like a six, six, like pretty easily. And uh, it ain't bad. True. But true. What is your 
numero three ski. Oh man. Mine's one that people are going to feel some kind of way about, but dust animus. It's a uh, colors and a white for a two, three spirit flying. And then if you control five or more untapped lands, it enters the battlefield with two plus one, plus one counters and lifelink. A lifelink. Counter. And you plot it for just two mana. Yep. Like the Sorry. thing here is, and this is a thing that I think, People may have missed on this card, but we can use it both aggressively or defensively, right? If we want to be in an aggro deck or we want to play it as a control type ish finisher, you know, like that's a thing you can play a four or five life linker for just two mana effectively is pretty powerful, you know, like, and what's cool about it is it doesn't really matter if you plot it or not later in the game, right? If you just have a pile of land, you're like, great, I'll just play it, whatever I get to get a four or five. Right. Or early on, again, like we talked about some of the other cards, let's go ahead and just plot it. We don't have to add anything to the battlefield. Sunfall goes off and you're like, great. Well, I have a four or five plus something on turn five or six or whatever. Right. Yep. So like this is just an all around really solid card. I, I like it. We talked a lot about this uh, when we kind of told each other what our picks were. This is one of the cards we talked the longest about. Um, I like this in like a million different decks. We talked about how good this is both with and against sweepers. Um, great thing to get back on the table against a sweeper with great thing to like, imagine like you play your fifth land or whatever. How many lands does it need? Five untapped lands. Five, Five untapped. Yeah. Okay. There are turns where you can sunfall and then like the next turn, get this for free. Mm-hmm. Um, and that seems like a great way to sort of set back up against aggro, you know? So I just, even as, even as like a two mana, two, three flyer, it could be worse. <laughs> like there are games I might actually play this early on if I don't have other two drops or if I know I can get in with it, but, um, it's also good. We didn't really talk about this. It's also just good in ramp. Yeah. Cause you know, you plot this early and then on turn three, you ramp and then on turn four, it's possible to just play this and get it you know like you'll have five lands on four you know also, in some of the older formats do have decks that care about spirits yeah it's also a spirit so there's that you know spell queller is a real card um yeah I'm into it, a real this deck. is an interesting one i don't know i again only underrated in the sense that it's only going for three or four bucks in a lot of places you can pick these up cheap <laughs> I would say if there was one I was going to speculate on, I'm okay dropping a couple of dollars on this. It doesn't bother Maybe. me too much. Like, but yeah, it's a cool card, honestly, all around. And the artwork's kind of crazy too. Yeah, I like the artwork too. I do. But I just I don't know, man. I think that this one has like so many different homes it could potentially go in. We'll see it somewhere, you know. All right. Let's get to your number two. Number two is Cam Ball, profiting mayor or profiteering mayor. Um this guy, uh, his name has not come out of anybody's mouth. And I really don't understand that because he looks so busted to me. Even in standard, this is three mana, one in Orzhov colors for a two, four legendary human advisor. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your opponent's control for each of them, create a tap token that's a copy of it. This ability triggers only once each turn. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one and you gain one. And that is not restricted to once per turn. Um, I just caught this wording, by the way, whenever one or more tokens Mm -hmm. enters under your opponent's control. So if they gleeful demolition, you do get all three tokens. Yep. You get three goblins. Um, There are just so many tokens. I think a lot of people are turned off by this because it cares about what your opponent's doing. So they just stop reading it or whatever, you know, but right now, Simic Artifacts puts tokens into play. Mono Green puts tokens into play. Blue Black Boat puts tokens into play. Mono White, Blue White puts tokens into play. Boros puts tokens. Every relevant deck in Standard, even um, Domain, plays Sunfall, and you will get the Incubator off of this, I believe, if they play a Sunfall. So just, I can't name a deck in Standard that doesn't play tokens. So like the first ability is good, but the second ability, this is the one you actually have control over. And there are so many cards just in black, white. If we were to open up to other colors, we could name cards all day, but just in black, white wedding announcement, wandering emperor, novice inspector. Those are three amazing cards that are good. And you you want to play good cards in your magic deck. You don't have to play a single bad card in your deck to have a good card with this card on curve every turn of the game. So, yeah, I look at this for a few reasons. One, I mean, you could just be playing some type of, tokens deck already and just play this and it's just extra damage right like it's almost like you getting that damage trigger from like a war leader's call but you're also gaining life 
right? It's basically exactly that. <laughs> yeah. And two, four matters because you're not going to get killed by like a cut down, cut down right? bolt. You, you can know. block most things as a four toughness, right? You're, you're not going to do a like lightning strike or, or lightning helix. So it does that very well. I think the life gain is being a little bit underrated on this. I think Absolutely. it actually is very important. And again, you don't have to play really any bad cards to make it work. It just slots into a few things. I, if anything, when we were talking about it, it said the only downside really is that it costs three, right? Because yeah. so many of the things you want to do are also going to be three. Costs mana, three. It's like add a line, makes tokens cost three, and a wedding announcement, taste of. Exactly. Three. Like that's the yeah. problem. But outside of that, I mean, that's a minor complaint really overall. Like I think it's still really worthwhile. And there's quirky stuff too. If you want to open it up to say Mardu, well, now you start talking about, can we play Anvil? Now Anvil triggers, and it's Ooh. two life loss and two Ooh. life gain every time. Yeah, Anvil. Right? <laughs> yeah. Anvil, Valdar, and Epicure um, yep. is suddenly a shock. Uh, Urbress Forge is, is guaranteed damage. And those turn. are all cards you, you know? already play in those decks. You in can literally Anvil. just find room for, like, two of these. And Anvil makes other tokens, too. Like, Sakens and Smelter is sometimes in the Anvil decks. Like, there's a lot. There's so much this card does. <laughs> and mana just doesn't matter right now. Like, you could play three colors easily. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. It's like Gleeful Demolition bolts your opponent. Reinforcements puts a, a damage on your opponent. You gain a life. It's just virtue of the white virtue. I forget which one it is. Oh, yeah, um, that one. Uh, virtue of loyalty. Loyalty, yeah. That, yeah. that gives you a ping and, or a drain and also is amazing later. So, good Lord. I just, I this card is so good, dude. And I haven't seen a single person mention it. And it just, why? I dig it. I think it's cool. I, I think that card. that could be a card. I won't say it's really a finisher, but it makes every card matter after that. Like everything well, that makes yep. a token becomes a problem. Yep. And I mean, a lot of the cards that make tokens were already problems. Well, true. <laughs> you know? That's the other issue. Just, yeah. like, how can they make Wandering Emperor better? Like, oh, it's all, it also drains them. You know, <laughs> it's so good. And also, you know, <laughs> in a way we're talking about creature tokens, but if you have stuff that's just making treasure, making food, making whatever, like that counts. <laughs> you know? It counts. I mean, all the things that make food, map tokens, just God. Yep, map tokens are a thing right oh, now. Man, what did before I pass out? What is your what is your number two? I'm too excited. Well, you know what? Kamball. It's a good segue because this works great with Comball as well because it's a bristle bud farmer. It's a two oh, colorless yeah. green green five five plant druid. So again, another plant. We were just talking about those. Yep. It does come with trample when it enters a battlefield. You get two food tokens or. If you have a com ball, you gain two life, your opponent loses two life. Right. <laughs> but then if that wasn't enough for four mana, whenever it attacks, you can sacrifice a food. And if you do, you get to mill three cards and put a permanent from those cards into your hand. And if you're playing green, there's a good chance at least one of those is going to be a permanent. Yep. <laughs> this Some. thing, I don't even know, man. Like, I, okay. We've seen five fives for four multiple times. And a lot of times they don't come with an ability or they have like one basic keyword or whatever. And they're not usually great. But this time we got one that's, if you really was just five, five for four with trample and either of the other two abilities, it'd be pretty solid. Yeah. The fact that we get yeah. all of that for four mana. And again, maybe fits into the plant decks. I don't know. I'm assuming this is just going to be a good aggro card and some green yeah. or green red type decks. But the fact that you also get the two food. So even if this dies, worst case scenario, you got two food for your four mana. Like that's an awesome upside to investing mana into a creature. Cause then right. you're not worried about sweepers as much or whatever. And then if it is a food type deck, well, maybe you're playing tough cookie and now you turn these into creatures later. That's two or, four fours. Yep. Yeah. Whatever the case may be. Like there's a bunch of options and we've seen food decks already be playable. This adds a lot of juice to those types of decks. Yeah. So I've been taking a lot of the threes out of my food decks. I just took out a couple of Sentinel, the nameless city from a uh, Simic food. That doesn't mean that the deck doesn't want fours if they're not good enough. Um, and this looks pretty good, dude. Like we, we were talking about this we kept both of us when we first read this card, we're like waiting on the downside. Yeah. Um, it just never happens. You know, it's like, we didn't talk about this um, going in like before we hit record, but like, you know what this kind of reminds me of what's that blossoming tortoise. And oh, like, kind of. Yeah. That card saw play, you know, it puts cards and it put, it puts um ramp on your side of the table. It mills you when it attacks. Uh, this doesn't quite do all the things tortoise does, but just, I want to say this again, because we, we brought this up uh, before we hit record. 
And I just, I can't stop thinking about it. Back in the day, we used to analyze cards. How good are they when you're ahead? How good are they when you're behind? And how good are they when you're even? And if you're already ahead, this pulls you even farther ahead without necessarily being win more. If you're behind, this card gives you two food tokens, a five, five and potential card advantage. And if you're even, this card pulls you ahead. So I just don't necessarily see a part of the game where this card is going to be bad. Like I keep getting comments in my comment section that say like, oh, this card is great, but it sucks. That it's going to be overshadowed in its own set by Colossal Rattleworm, the like six, five flash for four mana. And like, I don't know if that's true. I think this card might actually be up there or better than Rattleworm. Um, yeah, the I, I think they, trigger is so good. They might just fill different roles, right? This might <laughs> want to be in a deck that it cares about graveyard stuff, right? And you're trying to return things. It might care. Yeah. This might be a deck that cares about artifacts or tokens or whatever, right? These aren't necessarily going into the like the Rattleworm is just all business. You know what I mean? Yeah, like man. it's Strictly it's just business. I'm huge for four mana, possibly Raw. with haste. Maybe it goes into a desert deck because it has that upside to it, right? I think these both can be good cards, just maybe not in the same type of decks all the time. Yeah, they go in different stuff. This actually has a huge like spread of options. It can go mm-hmm. in, you know, just like green, black, mid range or something like that. I don't know how many shieldreds they're going to cut to pit in another four drop, but like it is a tempting card in a lot of builds, whether you're just building straight up and down mid range or some sort of food builder thing that cares about artifacts or plants. You know, we just talk about roots. And um, this takes cards out of the yard, which triggers roots. So yep. like, and it's a plant. Like, I don't know, man. Like, there's a lot of really good stuff about this card. A good pick. Yeah, really I'm into pick. this, man. I, yeah. I think it's really, really cool. I feel that class. I picked a four mana four, four cactus person. And you picked a four mana five, five cactus person. <laughs> but mine only gets haste because of yours. That's true. That's true. They, they go together very well. <laughs> it's true. All right. But, what um, do you have for your number one to round out your list? My number one is without a doubt, insatiable avarice. Um, this is another spree card. I just like sprees. Um, <laughs> but this one in particular is a sorcery. It costs a single uh, base black mana. But if you pump two extra mana into it, you search your library for a card, shuffle, put it on top. So three mana vampiric tutor. But you can also pay an extra two black mana and have any player draw three cards and lose three life. So I got a lot to say about this. I apologize in advance. Um, five total mana. Yeah. Five total mana to go get any card you want and also draw two other cards is phenomenal. But what I think people aren't looking at here is that it's three mana to draw three cards. And that is just a very good rate. Also, if you have a shieldred in play, it suddenly becomes life positive. If you have a shieldred in play and you target your opponent with the, the draw, they, they, they lose nine life. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> and you win the game. So This card's good, right? Question mark. (laughs) Yeah, I don't have a problem with this, right? I mean, we already have a lot of variations of tutors that if it puts it into your hand, generally costs four anyway. Yeah. Right? Whether we're talking about Diabolic Tutor, I think it was, or Beseech the Mirror or whatever. And now Beseech the Mirror also has other stuff for like if you sacrifice something, you can play a thing four or less or whatever. But they all basically come at a higher cost. This is Mm -hmm. one that for three mana kind of seems to be on rate for what we've seen where you can search for something, but it goes on top of your library, right? So it's fine. We get that card just because, but it comes with the upside of at any point during the game, you might want three more cards, right? Yeah. So why not? Three cards is a lot of cards. Yeah, draw three. And again, offensive or defensive. This could burn your opponent for three for the finisher or more like you're saying with Shieldred. I... I don't have a problem with this card at all. Yeah, like I just how many times? So we we're magic players. Um, we, how many times over the past two years have you been playing mono black or black X mid range of some kind? Shieldred dot deck, and like you run out of cards in your hand. Every game is it? Every game it's close, you know. So I just this is an incredible refill. That like, even if you don't have your shieldred out, well, the virtue of persistence you cast earlier in the game gained you life, right? The deep cavern bat you're swinging with gained you life, right? So like the graveyard trespasser you're swinging with is gaining you life. All the tokens life. So you like, leave behind from the reaper or like also gaining you life. life. Yeah. So you just, you've got a little bit of a cushion, you know, I see a lot of people playing Phyrexian arena yeah. in their black decks and like this gets you three cards right now for like, it's three turns worth of Phyrexian arena right now you know what? that's, that's actually so good that's a good question like would you 
I might, might. I mean, Phyrexian Arena is really good, but I yeah. might consider playing this over the Phyrexian Arena because I mean, it's you get your cards immediately, or yeah. you can go get the exact card you want. Yeah, the best card in your deck and draw it. Yeah, like I, if you have the mana, at least like that's so good. <laughs> like, even if okay, okay, oh cool, it's turn three. The card goes on top. I understand that, but it's turn three against Boros. I'm going to go get the sweeper. Yeah. You know, like go get your brotherhood's that, end or whatever it is. Is that good enough? You know, get the terror tide or whatever, you know? So I don't know, man. I think this card is actually kind of sick. And again, I haven't really heard anybody say it. This is one that I think people see like, Oh, it's the diabolic tutor and it's bad, but no, nah, dude, like, especially the card draw. I'm telling you, the card draw mode is blasted. Yeah. You're not going to catch me arguing too much over this one. This one's just, Solid all around, useful. I don't again, I don't think you're playing a full set of four, but like two or three nah. in a deck is fine. Yeah, maybe two, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's even. totally reasonable. And again, if you're playing a combo y type deck, you can go get your piece you need. If you're building around a certain card, like let's say, especially in the new set, you want to build around, I don't know, like say you've got a bunch of treasure out, you want to go get a Magda, right? So like <laughs> next turn you play it, you use all your treasure, you get three scorpion dragons scorpion or whatever. Dragon right? guys, yeah. So like this helps with those types of situations where because you know, you know how bad it is. Like when you build around a card and you just never draw it, it kind of sucks. But sucks. like now you can do that because it's almost like having eight copies potentially. Yeah, I mean, Mono Black has this deal now where it's got like Case of the Sass Skeleton, Beseech the Mirror, uh Servant of the Stinger is also mm-hmm. in the set. It's got like four different demonic tutors in standard alone. And it's also got a, a OTK. It's got a, a win the game combo um, where you got like blood letter of Aklazots and that oh, new yeah, thing yeah. from this set that makes them lose half their life. So blood letter doubles it. They die. Um, you've got that combo. It's a two card OTK. So you've got all these cards, including this one that can go and get your OTK pieces. And like that might matter too. Sure. So I just... <laughs> I'd talk about this card all night, but I'm not going to because I want to know your number one. My number one might actually be higher on some people's list, and they might already think really highly of this card, but I'm going with Archangel of Tithes. <laughs> and I'd forgotten that was your number one. It's good. This is a good pick. This yeah, good the pick. toughest thing about this card is really the cost, right? Because at four mana, do angels really need this card? But the question is, does it even go into an angel's deck, right? So for four mana, you get a... Three five and by the way, it's white heavy. It's yeah. colorless and three white mana, but it's a three five. So huge back end to block a bunch of stuff with flying, obviously because it's an angel. But as long as it's untapped, they can't attack you or your planeswalkers without paying one for each creature. When it's attacking, your opponent can't block without paying one for each blocking creature. So if you're playing something aggressive with tokens or whatever, like some number of those are probably going to get through. You know what I mean? Like you attack with this yeah. and five or six things, like. They have to pick and choose what they get to block, right? If you're in a tight situation later in the game, hell, even against mono red, they're not going to be able to tap all their mana to attack you because then they can't play their rage or they can't play lightning strike or whatever, right? So this plays into your favor there too. Like this feels like it just shuts down some things. The, The one downside to it or maybe upside so it's balanced is it doesn't have any type of ward or hex proof or anything like that. Yeah, nothing like that. But yeah. What's its toughness again? What is our Three five. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was a five toughness guy. It's like they have to witch stalk or frenzy it to kill it in mono red. Yeah. And like, but the problem Boros is they have even to have a way pay to, to attack you with those things first. Yeah, exactly. So they probably don't get to witch stalk or the frenzy. Manif- exactly. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> I mean, it's I guess in a world point. where if they had three or four creatures and paid for them and had one or two mana left over, then sure, they could still kill your archangel. Well, it still took their whole turn just to get rid of your one guy. Yeah. And- and I, if you have any other blockers, point. well, now they can block safely because no more spells are being played or whatever. Yeah, I, I think, okay, so you went first. I, I don't think you have to go first in this example. Let's just assume you did. Mm-hmm. You went first. You played Giada on turn two. Sure. You can get this on turn three against Boros, and then they die. They can't do anything for the rest of the game. By the way, as a um, four six at that point, because yeah, you have yeah, Giada. Giada. <laughs> right. And then like the only way they can kill it is case of the Gateway Express. So they have to have, like six guys out to kill this. It's like I <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is just a Boros killer. Um and note that if it is in like your Angels deck, then yeah, it's heavy on white, but you've got secluded courtyard. You've got um the stinking oh god oh, cave, cave, souls. cavern yeah. of souls yeah 
So like you've got all kinds of ways to like make Mardu angels so that you can still hit your double kicker on Archangel of Wrath, but also cast this card. Like yeah, I, th- I think the issue though is just like you already have so many threes and fours. You yeah. know, what are we cutting yeah. to play this? Or well, does this become our four of choice? So you get two of them out and your opponent just can't ever really do anything. Yeah. Like I'm I mean, attacking with one, I'm blocking with the other one. <laughs> you know, right? you like, effectively have like a propaganda out if you have two of these. Yeah. And that's good. <laughs> but even like you're right. Again, I hadn't even considered that against mono red. Yeah, they tap their mana, they can't rage you, they can't frenzy you, they can't, you know, strike your guy to give their, you know, to get prowess at instant speed and ruin your blocks. So like, yeah, that's a really big deal, just in and of itself. Um I like this card. I like this card the last time it was printed, and I think that it might be more of a sideboard thing. Possibly. But, you know, like right now, Angels is built a bit like a mono green ramp deck where like you want Giada on turn two and a four drop on three. So you're not adverse to playing like eight four drops in your deck. So like it's yeah, maybe you go like, you know, four Archangel, four of the like four two flying ward two lifelink guy that disguises. Never remember his name, but he's really good. And then like you work in two of these two in the board. You know, um, so I do think go. this is going to be a very powerful card. Very, very powerful card. I like most of the reprints in this set, but oh, this the reprints my, are great. I mean, besides Terror of the Peaks, this is probably my favorite reprint just because like we're not in a super heavy aggro standard or anything, but like there are decks this is going to play so oh, well against. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Good pick for number one. I, I think people are underrating it too. They just go, oh yeah, that was a good card. Last time I saw it, it's a reprint. Meh. But like, not only is Angels a good deck, but this is a good card outside of the context of just one th- Angels. One thing it's I will say card. is I think we have to look at reprints differently because I think people get super excited or not excited about a card depending on the last time it was available in standard. Yeah, completely different format. Oh, you know, yeah. The game changed cards. entirely. Power levels yeah. of things are changed. Like the way people play the game has changed. So like this card has a different value play wise than it had back then. Yes. Yeah. And if, if I'm not mistaken, it's saw uh, some sparing like sideboard play back then. Like it's, it's seen play in constructed environments and I could see it happening again. We've got, you know, mono red isn't the only low to the ground deck. Neither is Boros. Like, you know, if like, like I just said, I'm playing a lot of Simic artifacts lately. If you taxed me every time I tried to attack you, I could never do anything. Like I can't Zoetic glyph and attack you in the same turn. So I'm dead. You oh, know, yeah. like it's <laughs> like, oh, there's, there's the little bitty gruel decks too, that are trying to get you with the picnic ruiner and picnic whatever. Ruiner, like, those decks yep. get shut down. Because those decks need all their mana every turn to like mm-hmm. audacity and rage. And, you know, like they, they can't do that now. So, yeah, great pick. Great pick. Well, you know but, what? That means now we need everybody to go to the comments and tell us how dumb we are or things yeah. that we ignored or cards <laughs> that they think are. How could you not talk about this card? Because there's always going to be somebody, right? Somebody. How but, could you not talk about Lost Jit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lost Jitte. Well, why don't you don't worry, also we'll be tell people where they can find you on the YouTubes? Well, I am on strictly better MTG on the youtube.com at Google <laughs> um, sponsored by alphabet. No, you can just check out uh, just go to your YouTube search bar and type in five letters S B M T G. And I will show up and I got some, there's a couple of videos on the channel, you know, just like 1.6 K videos, not as many as this guy, but like, yeah, but, <laughs> you, got quite a few. Channel. <laughs> but yeah, we actually just got done with our top 10 sleepers for the set. Um, and there's no, you know, redundancy between the cards I just said and the cards that are on my list. And we're about to do the top 50 cards in the set in a couple of days. So lots of content. Come on over, hang out with us for a while. That's perfect. So yeah. y'all know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe button down below. Then hop over to Dev's channel and go watch another video. Woo. But it's over <laughs> here for now. We'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.